Hey, guys. Welcome back to Film and Animation Recaps and today we're covering the 2021 thriller. But before we begin, remember to leave a like, a comment and of course, subscribe if you like the breakdown. The movie starts with a young woman trying on some lingerie in a shop. The young woman is named Pippa. She goes back home filled with excitement. Pippa has just moved into a new apartment with her boyfriend. Thomas works as a musician and Pippa is employed as an ophthalmologist. The rules of the house are that they cannot paint on the wall or hang anything from the ceiling. Thomas wonders if curtains are part of the rules. The agent tells him that the landlord does not lease the space to just anyone. The young couple is ecstatic to finally be settling into their new home. After dedicating most of their time to reading in school, Pippa is tempted to experience more rebellion in her life. She asks Thomas that they only consider children after four years of living together. Later that evening as they are bonding over dinner they notice flashing lights from an apartment across the street. Curiosity gets the best of them and they notice that they can see a couple from the next building. Pippa is unsure about spawning on the couple while Thomas still wants to indulge. The couple is getting cozy and they eventually go tango in between the sheets. The next day Pippa heads to work with her friend and colleague Ari. Ari and her partner are on a social media break. Pippa gives the juicy details of her first night in the new house with Thomas. She tells Ari about the couple across from them who were getting busy for all to see. Ari wonders if they had binoculars to watch the action. Piva tells her that it would be an invasion of privacy but Ari feels that watching is harmless. Pippa works hard at her job. Her boss gives her a mini birdhouse that she can hang outside for the birds to feed on. The harmless neighbor watch continues. Pippa and Thomas banter and try to guess their neighbor's names. The man is eating in the kitchen while the lady is on her headphones folding clothes. They notice the man starts to choke and panic since the lady can't see. Thomas is tempted to call 911 to come to the rescue. Pippa tells him to go over instead and help him. The lady manages to see him from the bedroom door and saves him time. The interest in the neighbors keeps building by the day. Pippa notices the lady leaving for a trip as she checks out her husband who stands half naked by the window. Thomas also tries to work but gets distracted by the buzz of activity in the house across the street. One day Pippa spots a pair of binoculars in a shop and gets a brilliant idea to buy them. This will dial their watchful eyes up a notch. In Pippa's defense because the neighbors have already given them a full view, the binoculars make the watching more exciting. When the guy invites a lady who was at the house earlier for a shoot, things get steamy between him and the model. Pippa decides to take advantage of the situation. She hands Thomas the binoculars as she helps him celebrate Palm Sunday. They take turns and their devil's dance turns out to be more rewarding than expected. Pippa and Thomas meet up with Ari and Joni for a coffee date. Pippa and Thomas fill them in on the details of the chronicles of the neighbors' love lives. Deep down Pippa wishes that she could hear what the neighbors were saying to each other. Joni remembers spying on someone's conversation using a rigged Jerry laser pointer into a long-range microphone. Pippa is curious about setting up the microphone. Thomas explains that for the idea to work they would have to sneak into their house and perfectly place a mirror behind the window to make the sound bounce back to them. Pippa notices them setting up for a party and the man dressed in a costume. She gets the idea for them to sneak into their neighbor's apartment. Here they set up their microphone as planned when they get to the party. Brent carries Pippa to where he has set up a mini photo booth. Thomas is weary but finally agrees to take the picture with Pippa. Their plan is a success and Pippa and Sam finally set up the sound. Much to their dismay the first conversation they hear is an argument between the lady and the guy. She accuses him of cheating but the man denies the same. He uses manipulation tactics and gets her to apologize to him instead. The argument affects Pippa who can barely concentrate at work. The next day, coincidentally, the lady from next door visits the hospital to replace her specs. Pippa is surprised to see her. She's been referred to Pippa for the best assistance. Pippa finds out that the lady's real name is Julia. They're now eye to eye as Pippa does a checkup on her vision. The two end up bonding and Julia decides to invite Pippa on a spa date. They exchange contacts and agree to set a date. Thomas is at home working on a jingle for an advertisement. Exhausted from all the work he gets the binoculars and decides to watch Brent. Brent is taking pictures of another model. Thomas watches intently as Brent convinces the model to indulge in a naked tickle party. Brent is a serial womanizer. Pippa is excited about her date with Julia and she tells Thomas all the juicy details. Thomas is starting to get weary of their spa and having to live in the dark so Julia and her husband won't see them. Pippa is against stopping. She believes she now has a moral responsibility toward Julia especially since she knows her husband has been cheating on her. Thomas disagrees and reminds Pippa that it's none of her business. Pippa and Julia meet up and go to the spa. They talk about their lives. Julia reveals that she was a model but did not finish school. Pippa finds out that Julia's husband is named Sebastian. Julia hints at some struggles in her marriage. Pippa offers comfort and accidentally calls her Margot. 
Julia is confused since she was disguised as Margot during her Halloween party. Sebastian continues to live his double life as a photographer and womanizer. Pippa spies on him hiding and using protection in their dustbin. She wakes up in the middle of the night and is back to watching Julia. Pippa decides to connect to Julia's printer so that she can tell her about Sebastian's escapade. She tests out a blank piece of paper and it works. Pippa types a message to Julia to check her dustbin for used protection. Julia is hurt and disappointed. Thomas walks up in the middle of the night and finds Pippa up to no good. They see Julia reach for a knife in the kitchen. Julia is intent on stabbing Sebastian. Thomas and Pippa argue about alerting the police. He believes Pippa's actions may have instigated a murder. However Julia thinks twice and throws the knife away. Pippa and Thomas have a heartfelt conversation the next morning. Thomas expresses his disappointment. He feels that he's not enough for Pippa. Pippa promises to throw the binoculars and never see Julia again. As they embrace Pippa sees that Julia has stabbed herself instead. Thomas is shocked and he decides to leave and stay with the sisters. Thomas breaks up with Pippa at that moment. He blames Pippa for failing to listen to him and contributing to Julia's death. Pippa sees Julia's glasses and tries to call her phone in the hopes that the events she witnessed are not true. Tippa ends up apologizing in the voicemail message. The days and nights prove to be lonely for Pippa as she struggles with self-blame and a failed relationship. She keeps watching Sebastian who decides to leave his house for a drink at the BA Pippa's curiosity gets deeper. She heads down to the same bar and sits at a table. She's watching Sebastian intently when he notices her through the mirror. Pippa is afraid but plays a cool. Sebastian seems to recognize her but Pippa denies them ever meeting. They end up keeping each other company at the bar. Sebastian is straightforward and asks tough questions. Sebastian apologizes for his crass behavior and he later suggests that they go back to his place to continue with the party. With all the emotional investment in Sebastian's story Pippa agrees to the idea and they head back to his place. Just as with the models before. Sebastian gets Pippa to slowly strip down to her birthday suit. He takes his pictures but they're too distracted by each other. Pippa gives in to her desires and she and Sebastian end up indulging in some horizontal enjoyment. Unknown to Pippa. Thomas comes back to the apartment. He has a bouquet and is eager to make amends. He takes a sip of his chlorophyll juice but finds it revolting and puts it in the bird cage instead. While there he sees Pippa and Sebastian getting busy and he feels hurt and betrayed. Pippa ends up spending the night but heads home the next day. She finds her apartment door slightly open and walks in to find Thomas has hung himself. Pippa is distraught. She's lost the love of her life and spends most of her days living in regret. Pippa spots a poster of Sebastian's exhibition. She decides to meet Ari on the same evening and she tells her the whole story. From the endless spying on the neighbors to sleeping with Sebastian. Pippa feels responsible for Thomas's death but Ari comforts her. Ari and Pippa decide to go to the exhibition. Pippa is shocked to see Julia is still alive when Sebastian introduces her. Their exhibition is about Pippa's tragic tale. It turns out Pippa and Thomas moved into the apartment owned by Sebastian and Julia. One by one they reveal a pictorial story of how Pippa first moved in. Thomas started watching their neighbors snuck into a party and bugged the apartment down to Thomas's unfortunate demise. Sebastian and Julia had been watching them the whole time since they moved in. Pippa feels hurt and betrayed. She runs off and goes to Sebastian's house. She notices a door on the ceiling. She walks in to find several pictures of her and Thomas on the wall. Pippa is crestfallen and destroys all the equipment. Living in the same house is not an option and she opts to move out. She removes the birdhouse and pours out the remaining chlorophyll juice. However she notices several birds have died. And she puts two and two together in an interview. Sebastian and Julia reveal that it's a term in their lease contract to watch the neighbors. Their work is set to premiere worldwide. Julia feels that their actions are justified but Sebastian feels guilty for what they've done. Sebastian and Julia get back home and find a bottle of wine wrapped as a gift on their doorstep. It's a congratulatory present and as they're talking, the printer comes to life. Pippa sends them a message telling them she knows that Thomas did not kill himself but was murdered. Julia and Sebastian fall for the bait and they notice Pippa on the rooftop in the next building. She runs off and leads them into the office building where she works. They find her in the lab. Pippa begs for her life. It turns out that Julia snuck into their apartment and spiked Thomas's chlorophyll juice. Pippa knows deep down that Thomas was not in a state to get rid of himself. Pippa watches as Julia's talking. The words get caught in Julia's throat and she faints. Sebastian's worried and demands answers from Pippa. Pippa tells him the wine was from her. She forces him to take a look at her and promises that it's the final thing he will see. One after the other Pippa uses the eye machine at the office to destroy Julia and Sebastian's vision. A new couple has moved into the apartment where Pippa and Thomas were staying. They notice that they can see straight through to Julia and Sebastian's apartment. Julia and Sebastian are back at their house. Safe and sound but with no sense of vision. True to Pippa's promise. 
she was the last thing they were ever going to see. Ta's the end guys. Let me know your thoughts on comments and make sure to subscribe for more.